Did you know the story of Billy the Kid, the most famous gunslinger of the Wild West? A young man who lived on the edge, surrounded by tragedy, violence, and mystery. What you might not know is that his final words were in Spanish, leaving an enigmatic mark as intriguing as his life. But how much of what we think we know is actually true? Get ready to uncover the secrets behind his story. Origins and Family Tragedies Billy's mother, Catherine McCarty, was an Irish immigrant who survived the Great Famine. She married William Henry Harrison Antrim, and they moved several times in search of stability. However, Catherine succumbed to tuberculosis when Billy was 14, leaving him and his brother Joseph orphaned. With his stepfather abandoning them shortly after, Billy found himself alone, marking the beginning of his path to a life of crime. First Arrests and Escapes Billy was a cheerful young man, always willing to help and with a strong connection to Hispanic culture. But his lack of family support led him down a dark path, at 15 he was arrested for stealing food and later detained again for another theft with Sombrero Jack. Despite these arrests, Billy escaped through a chimney and fled to Arizona, becoming a federal fugitive. Confrontation with his stepfather and exile. In Arizona, Billy tracked down his stepfather, who took him in briefly before kicking him out, leading Billy to leave after stealing clothes and weapons. From then on, they would never meet again. In Arizona, Billy worked as a ranch hand for Henry Hooker, a friend of the legendary Wyatt Earp. Here he learned about cattle, horse care, and honed his firearm skills. However, his youth and fondness for gambling led to his dismissal. By 1876, Billy was already known as Kid Antrim, a nickname given by soldiers he robbed alongside a Scottish criminal. His skill with weapons, along with his large Mexican hat, began to give him fame in the region. The hat wasn't just a stylish accessory, it shielded him from the harsh sun and dust of the arid west. Distinct Traits and Curiosities Billy was a young man with a strong character, and though he had many Mexican friends, he was always ready to confront anyone who challenged him, including older men. These traits, combined with his jail escapes and a life of constant danger, cemented his reputation in the Wild West. Did you know that Billy the Kid, one of the West's most notorious outlaws, earned his feared reputation at just 17 by killing a man in self-defense? This is only part of the intriguing tale of a young man who defied the law, escaped justice, and became a legend. The Final Hunt In November, while fleeing Garrett's deputies, Billy and his gang holed up in a ranch. Deputy James Carlisle attempted to mediate as a hostage but was shot when trying to escape. In December, Garrett tracked the outlaws to Fort Sumner, where he killed Tom O'Falliard, Billy's closest friend. Days later he found Billy and his gang in Stinking Springs, New Mexico, and surrounded them. During the skirmish, Charlie Beaudre was killed. After a failed attempt at revenge, he died. Finally the gang surrendered, out of resources. Billy was taken to Santa Fe, where he pleaded for clemency from Governor Lou Wallace, but his pleas went unheard. At his trial, he was sentenced to hang for the assault on Sheriff Brady, the only person condemned from the Lincoln County War. He was transferred to a makeshift jail in Lincoln, guarded by James Bell and Bob Ollinger. Exploiting a moment of inattention, Billy attacked and escaped in a spectacular fashion, stealing weapons and fleeing the town. Billy's escape launched an intense manhunt, fueled by a $500 bounty offered by Wallace for his capture, dead or alive. The exact number of people Billy killed remains a mystery. He allegedly claimed 21 lives, one for each year of my life. Historians, however, agree he likely took no more than nine lives, including Grant, his jailers, and some others of uncertain record. Was Billy the Kid as deadly as the legend suggests? J.C. Dykes, a historian specializing in Billy's life, doubts the extent of his crimes. It's estimated he committed six or seven confirmed murders, far fewer than the 58 attributed to outlaws like John Wesley Harden. Dykes also claims, there's no evidence that Billy killed any Mexicans or Native Americans, dispelling his reputation as one of the era's most feared men. 
After a time as a fugitive with the help of loyal friends who provided refuge and information, Billy was finally tracked down by Sheriff Pat Garrett in Fort Sumner on July 14, 1881. Garrett and his deputies sought information at Pete Maxwell's home. While accounts vary on what happened, the common version states that Garrett shot Billy that night. Allegedly, Billy entered Pete's room and, seeing a stranger on the porch, asked, Who's there? Garrett, hiding in the dark, recognized him and fired, ending the infamous outlaw's life. A legend lives on. This version, however, has been questioned. Some believe Garrett set an ambush in a dark hallway, avoiding a direct confrontation. Rumors also suggest a romance between Billy and Paulita Maxwell, Pete's sister, or with Deluvina Maxwell or Celsa Gutierrez, Garrett's sister-in-law, fueling speculation around Billy's death circumstances. Later, Garrett defended his story in a book about Billy's life, which only gained recognition years after its publication. Another theory suggests Garrett helped Billy fake his death to start a new life. Over the years, several men claimed to be Billy the Kid. The most famous was Brushy Bill Roberts, who in 1948 asked New Mexico's governor for a pardon, which was never granted. Many historians doubt these claims, but the mystery around Billy's death persists. In 2010, the story resurfaced when New Mexico's governor, Bill Richardson, was asked to grant Billy a posthumous pardon. Richardson refused, saying he didn't want to rewrite history. Do you think Billy the Kid should be pardoned posthumously? Share your opinion in the comments.